Now that we have created the walls, let's import in the slabs. As we did before, from file, go to import and choose AutoCAD DXF. Choose the slab DXF and click import. Now the slabs have been imported, you will notice that it's in the same location in the XY plane as it was in the CAD file. You will see that the slab object is imported as a curve. We'll just right click and convert it to mesh. Press tab to go to edit mode. Press A to select everything. Then press M and choose by distance to make sure all the vertices are merged. We have two slabs, one for the ground floor and one for the first floor. Let's separate them from each other. While you are in edit mode, press Alt plus A to deselect everything or just click any empty space to deselect. Now press B and drag your mouse to select one of the two slabs. Now press P to get the separate menu and choose selection. That will separate the ground floor slab to a separate object. Now press tab again to go back to object mode. You will see that we can now select each one separately. Let's select the ground floor slab and press tab again to start editing it. Press A to select everything, then press Alt plus F so we can fill it with a face. Let's clean it a little by pressing X and then choose Limited Dissolve. Now we are ready to extrude this slab and give it a little thickness. Press E. You will notice that it's automatically logged on the Z axis, so we can just write down 0.2. You might notice that it's extruding downwards in the negative direction. So we can fix that by writing down the negative sign and that will flip the extrusion upwards. But instead of flipping it this way, let's fix it more cleanly by adjusting the normals of the mesh faces. So press Ctrl Z to undo the extrusion for now. From here, the normals direction can be toggled on. Scroll down until you see the normals and click on the faces normals toggle. That will show you this little blue line coming out of the faces which indicates where this face is pointing. Another way to check the normals of the faces for all the objects is by checking the face orientation checkbox right here. Which will show you the faces that are facing outwards in blue and the faces that are facing inwards in red. This is important to understand as this might impact how the materials will look like in the final render. So to fix the normals for all the objects we have, go to object mode by pressing tab, select one of the objects to make it the active one, then press A to select all the objects, then press tab and that will switch to edit mode in all the objects at the same time. Press A to select everything. Now we can use the shortcut for recalculating the normals, shift plus N. You will notice that all the red faces have changed to blue and the little blue line is now facing outwards like the rest. The only object that hasn't been fixed is the slab object here. Let's press tab and go to object mode, select the slab and then press tab again to start editing it. The reason why it didn't get fixed is because it's only a flat plane mesh and not a 3D object yet. So Blender doesn't actually know which direction is the one we need. If you press shift plus N again, nothing will happen. But if you check down here in the recalculate normals option, you can switch the direction manually by checking this checkbox. And now the plane is facing upwards. If we try to extrude now by pressing E and then write down 0.2, you will see that it's extruding upwards without having to write down a negative sign. You should always aim to use positive values wherever you can just to avoid any complications with normals later. Let's do the same thing for the other slab. This one does not have an opening in the middle as this will be the roof of the house. So we can just press F and that will fill it with a face. This one has the normals facing the correct way. So let's extrude it up by pressing E and write down 0.2 as well. Let's toggle off the face orientation and the normals direction. We don't actually need them to be on to fix the normals, but it will help you detect if your model has any normal errors during your project. Alright, now that we have all the main parts of the house, let's assemble them on top of each other to get the house shape. First thing we need to do is separate the ground floor walls from the first floor walls and make them separate objects. 
just as we did with the slabs. Let's select the walls object, press tab, then press alt plus a to deselect everything, press z and go to wireframe to be able to select more easier. Now press b and select the ground floor walls, press p for the separate menu and choose selection, press tab again to go to object mode. What we need to do next is place the origin point of these objects in their center. Right now their origin which is this orange dot is in the world origin. To move the origin of these objects make sure you are in object mode. Press A to select everything. Right click then go to set origin menu and choose origin to geometry. Now the orange dots are in the middle of their objects. Ok now let's start snapping these objects on top of each other. Up here you have the snapping options. Right now the snapping is set to increments. To be able to snap perfectly we need to use the vertex snapping. So switch it to vertex. The ground floor walls will be the base on which we will build everything. So let's start moving the other parts to it. Let's start with the ground floor slab. Select it, then press G to move it, then press Z to move it up like that. Press once on your left mouse button to confirm the position. We need to snap this vertex here to this vertex right here on the walls to make it fit in the right place. To do that, while we have the slab selected, press G to move it, then press X to move it on the X axis. While you have it moving like that, move your mouse cursor and put it right on top of the vertex we want to snap to. When you have the mouse cursor in the correct position, press and hold control to snap the selected object right on top of this vertex. While holding down control, press the left mouse button to confirm the new position. You will notice that the slab snapped from the closest edge right here, as by default we have here the snap width option set to closest. Let's move this slab in place by pressing G, then Z and hovering over the same vertex here, then press Ctrl, then left click again to confirm. Alright, let's snap the first floor walls on top of this slab. It's the same thing, select it, press G, then Z to move it up to be above the slab, press G again, then X and snap it to this vertex. You can now press G, Z and Ctrl to snap it in place. And finally let's snap the last object with the same steps. Using control to snap the object in the right place might be a little tricky at first, but having all the objects snapped correctly in place is essential to have a clean model in the end. That concludes this lecture. In the next lecture we will make a few adjustments to the mesh of the walls here at the front entrance to fill in this gap. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as new videos get uploaded. Till then, you can check out more of my other tutorials from these links.